Hey everybody, this is Chris Cook. Um, I'll hand it over to him. Welcome to my studio. I'm doing something a little different here. I'm working my plein air study from our trip, which I've got right here, and I'm working it to this larger canvas. I've already done a couple passes on it, just, you know, really quick, loose passes, you know, sort of the same way that I would work in plein air as far as like brushwork, just kind of direct big brushwork using, you know, just using a bigger brush because it's a bigger canvas. I buy these panels, they're wood panels. So that's what this is as well. This piece is 30 by 40 inches. So in my plein air piece, I spent most of my time just kind of scoping out the island. I ended up finding a spot that was, that I had to crouch down to get the view I wanted. I also made some creative choices that were outside of what was there actually, um, as far as the contrast what being one of the main things. I really decided to go, which it was a little more contrast, you know, when it's windier, the ocean tends to be darker. You get more of more vertical planes on the, the water surface. So you're seeing into the water more, even at an acute angle. Um, and so that's why you get a darker ocean. But I liked that dark graphic shape that was being made but between the cliff and the sky. And um, that was part of the reason I got low to the ground was I wanted to get that angle in which the horizon was at the right spot for me relative to the landmass. And then this huge flock of seagulls came real low from around this part of the cliff and started just billowing up over this side. And I was like, oh my goodness, I've got to paint that. So, you know, particularly what I liked is that they made a light pattern on top of the ocean, but as they broke the horizon, they became dark shapes backlit by the sky. And so what I really want this painting to eventually be about is this billowing cloud of seagulls that are both, you know, coming out of behind this cliff and then breaking the horizon. So, um, you know, we already have that going on, but it's going to be a challenge. You know, a lot of the things are going to be the same as the plain air piece, but really when it comes to crafting that shape of the seagulls, that's where I'm going to be able to do something on a large scale that would have been nearly impossible on plain air. I mean, one, I had to work from memory. And then two, when I'm working quickly, I really didn't craft the shape that well. I, I got the general flow of the seagulls, but you know, they came out really spotty. It, our tendency is to put these dots, you know, and this happens with all kinds of things, whether it's, you know, flowers in, in a field or uh, sky holes in a tree or you know, any, any, any number of things where you have lots of little shapes, um, the brain's tendency is to simplify and understand easily what's happening. And the more equal spaced everything is, the more easily we can interpret it, the more our brain can move on to the next thing. But we don't want people to move on to the next thing. We want people to stay here. We want people to have plenty of stuff for them to spend time on. And particularly here where the focus is, we want the shapes to be very varied. So that's going to take me a lot of time just getting all these shapes. I've already done a little bit. You can see I've, I've masked highlights on the seagulls here so that there's a little thicker. And then I've started to make um, a little lone seagulls or clusters where it's like, okay, maybe three seagulls are touching here and there's one seagull that's alone here and really figuring out what that's going to be. The other main difference is, you know, our opportunity here on this large canvas in the studio to spend time on brushwork and color that I just didn't do on location. I'm just planning out some spots of color and then we're going to work on the transitions and really getting those transitions complex. Some of these colors, maybe they won't be as bold in the finished product as they are right now. Uh, a lot of times with value, I like to connect. So for instance, the, the value and color that I've got spotted around the canvas with this, you know, lavender blue, I've brought in from the sky and I've just kind of worked it around the canvas. And I do that a lot with different colors, just working them around the canvas because I want 
them to be connected. And the, these little spots connect the landscape into this and the sky. And even if later I, I go over and, and stumble over that or put some other colors, they'll still show through and sort of just give you that connection. Sometimes it's nice if you have these energies, sort of like this creates an energy where this hill meets that cliff hill. And there's another energy here. So this one is broken naturally by the edge of the cliff that expands it out into the water. But on this side, if we're not careful, we'll get this arrow that leads you right off the edge. So one thing I noticed, and it was there, is that there's sort of this little dip or crevice where it kind of breaks the levels. And I sort of emphasize that crevice here, and we'll finesse that shape, but just having a little crevice that, that sort of like breaks that line as we approach the edge of the canvas is, is enough. And even um, if we make something thicker here, we want to complicate the thickness of this line with things like that little broken or a soft edge. So if we soften that edge and break it there and then complicate it with these little dips, you know, that's gonna create a little resistance to that. Um, you know, it wasn't that strong of a, of a thing anyway because we already had some different values, but still just thinking about that kind of stuff is important. So kind of over here, I'll probably have a little bit of a harder edge because this part of the cliff was to me a little more important. And the other thing I had going on in the plein air was that I liked was there was sort of this band of, of green on the water where the water kind of got warm here, out here, which I think was a combination of things happening. I don't know if there was perhaps some kelp that was underneath the water surface just about that distance off the shore that caused that band of water to be slightly calmer than the rest of the water. And so it reflected a little more skylight and warmed it up. That said, of course, it's, it's not so important why or, or what was there as much as what do you want to be there that supports the complexity and the thought you had your design. So I think in some pieces I make up more stuff than in others. This one, I don't feel relative to, to my other pieces, you know, is that made up. It was pretty, um, I was painting pretty much what was there. Color wise, you know, things are definitely a little different. Than some. Chris, it's looking amazing. And um, a couple comments we have that um, Elaine says, your painting already looks fascinating. And Elizabeth Weems wanted you, wanted you to know it's a beautiful composition. So. Thank you, I appreciate that when it comes to composition that is the one thing that really has to be there for my plein air study to become a larger piece if, if it has a good composition but it's too finished too complete um i don't want i don't have motivation to make it to do it again but if there's a great design in my plein air piece but i didn't get the whole thing across um that's the ideal spot. Um, and that's exactly what happened here. I felt like, okay, this has really good bones, um, but I can't put the seagulls in the way I want on that level. I want you to be able to see the seagulls with this piece. They're the size, they're still pretty small, but they're big enough now that as I go to finish this painting later, there's space there to get some detail on the seagulls. Hey, Chris, what size do you paint in the field when you're out plain air painting? Oh, when I'm plein air painting. So um, this piece that was the plein air piece is 12 by 16. I have a little shot box that I like that holds a range of sizes. And, and that's what I particularly like about it. It holds anything from, it has an eight inch slot. So it holds eight by eights, eight by tens. It holds, it has a 12 inch slot that holds 11 by, or no, um, nine by 12s, 12 by 12s and 12 by 16s. And it has a, 
11 inch that holds like 11 by 14. So usually one of those sizes. And I usually bring all of them so that I can decide when I'm on location which one to use. Excellent. Thank you. All right. We're going to let the water transition to being a little greener as it comes up down here in front of the cliff, just because that's typical of what happens as the water comes closer to us. Not only do these warm colors, you know, show up as they're close and things tend to get cooler as they go into the distance, but also sometimes there's shallower water or rocks underneath and you see more of the sand through the water and things like that. Um, I'm not sure what, you know, the water was pretty deep off the cliffs here, so I don't think we were really seeing a lot of sand underneath, but I do remember it getting a little warmer. So, and then while I have that green on my brush and I'm working with it, I could use some of that green in here into these darks where I have some foliage. Not that all the foliage was green. As a matter of fact, most of it wasn't, but there was still little bits of green. Well, Chris, I want to thank you for joining us and sharing your talents with us. If you want to help an artist out, like this video and share your thoughts in the comments. To catch part two, where I'll show the completion of this painting, subscribe to Creative Disciple. Thanks for tuning in.